the little thing says live right there. It's live. Hello, Patrick. Second yeah, hello. round. How have you been? I'm good. There's there's Nicole from Berkeley, California, home of home of many good record stores. Ow. <laughs> Oh yeah, home of home of many good record stores sounds fine to me. That sounds very fine to me. So is it, it some this week? No, I have I have family here. So those who know me, so when I said Al, I've, I, I'm I'm known for kicking my desk, like when I cross my legs and stuff. So if I say <laughs> Al, most people laugh and go, "Look, Patrick just hit his desk again." I remember one time I like I slammed my. My, my leg on it one time and I was like almost crying and it, it's just a just kind of a thing that I do that people people know so <laughs> okay but otherwise you 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 streamed or what yeah you streamed craftback this week very enjoyable. I did I did I, when y'all were talking about dimension machine at uh, at Rachel's mm -hmm. so I said oh okay I'll be I'll be yes. topical this week and uh, <laughs> and and we did that I I hadn't listened to it in a long time either you know because you are talking about you know an original you know German and then I saw your discogs video where you yeah. Had that bootleg experience, you know, and well, is boot, isn't bootleg not too polite? Isn't I think it might even be counterfeit, counterfeit, without... private press. I don't, I don't know what I don't know how how you tra however however you worded it, it wasn't an official release, you know. Yeah, without any and, dead, uh, any any marks in the deck box, probably not. Yeah, yeah, yeah this you know. things might happen. How are your experiences with discogs in the last time? Good. You're probably you know, also very professional with when it comes to discogs. I mean, I, I saw your video, and I've never had that experience where somebody sent me a, a, a bootleg or a counterfeit. Um, and I've had lots of experiences. Uh, most of my problems with Discogs are people don't send me the right matrix numbers. Mm. You know, I, so I, I, I've just gotten in the habit. I have like, I have like macros pro programmed into little snippets, like Stunty's thing that he post, puts on his. I will sit there and go, hey, please make sure, you know, and I'll put like a little blurb and I'll copy and paste. Please mm -hmm. make sure the matrix says this and this, you know, and, and if it's not, you know, it's cool, you know, and please cancel the order, you know? So, cause I mean, but, but sometimes you get so excited and you forget to do that and you go, Oh my God, you know, it, it's like something's, on, something's <laughs> on your want list. And, and, you know, some of the stuff, you know, that I have on my want list, if I don't pull the trigger immediately, someone else will, you know, and it'll be gone like within 30 minutes, you know, so there was like a Van Halen balance album that is, is really hard to find pretty much unobtainium, you know, mm -hmm. and it came up on my want list and I didn't have time to ask him the questions. And I just kind of said, okay, I'm just going to do it. Cause it was mm -hmm. like half of what it usually costs. Okay. And I was like going, I'm, I'm in, you know, and you take that risk. How was the outcome? Lucky? Or I don't know I'm... yet. I'll, I'll let you know when it ah, gets here. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 So, we'll so see. but one thing, you know, if you pay with PayPal, one thing that PayPal will do I think up to five times a year is they will pay you for the return shipping. If you file a claim and you, you show them that, Hey, you know, I did this wrong. They will pay your return shipping. So up to like five times a year, you can, you can do that. And that helps mm -hmm. a little bit, you know, because, right. but, but also consider the time, which is, but, but conversely, point. think about, think about this also is that when you, at least for me, if I go to a record store, let's say I drive down to Berkeley and I go to, and I go to Rasputin's, which is a big mm -hmm. famous record store in Berkeley, oh. California. And I buy a, a $500 album, you know, and I take it home and it's not what, I, and it doesn't, it's not sound as good as I thought it would be. It looked really great, but let's okay. say it has a skip. <clears throat> let's say it has a couple of skips. It's noisy. Mm -hmm. I'm stuck with that record. You know, I can't go back to that record store and say, Hey, I bought this here. It's noisy. They won't take it back. You know, I have no recourse, but I'm stuck with it. That's why when I go to a record show, I won't buy expensive records at a record show because I, okay. I, I will only buy expensive records on Discogs or eBay or someplace or I can at the very least, you know, have a PayPal dispute and say, hey, this wasn't, you know, what he said it would be. I want my money back. You know, yeah, but so what, what if, if you go back to this to this record store and say, come on, here are several skips. Will they say, no, not when you took it out, you did it or what will they say? They won't take it back. I mean, use record stores, at least in my experience around here, they won't take. I mean, if there's one record store here that, I, that I've been going to for years. If I go in there and say, hey, you know, this has a skip, he, he'd be cool with me. But most of them, they don't know you and anything, you know, so. Interesting. Interesting. So next week, next Saturday, yesterday in one week, I will go to my first record fair. Let's see how, how the outcome will be here in, here in Düsseldorf is one. 
and I want to try it out for once. Yeah. So yeah, Stunty. I mean, yeah, you 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 forget about it. You sit there and you go, oh God, I, I gotta have this, and you know, it's like, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Sorry, I, I'm I'm getting I have to get used to like now manipulating the comments as well. So yeah, yeah. So because yeah, we did that before we started. That Patrick now also has the opportunity when we do this live streams together. That yeah, I mean it's not on, yeah. because he's he's in his head. He's generally much much uh, quicker than me probably, but he's also quicker when it comes to to the English language. Well, yeah, you, know, you can you can inspect a record and it looks beautiful. You know, I've gotten I've got a I've got a Miles Davis kind of blue that looks phenomenal, but it's noisy as shit. <laughs> you know, I mean, lots of people had that problem. You know, and. But you cleaned it, of course, and it still yeah. was. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're horrible here. I mean, I mean, okay. there's there, there's several good record stores here, but but I mean, they even a lot. Most of them say in as you walk in, no returns on used vinyl, point blank. You know, no returns on used vinyl. Okay. Okay. That's a nice one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I wouldn't do. I mean. <laughs> I, I get nervous seeing people with those portable turntables at record shows playing the records. I'm like going, I don't want to buy the record you just put on that turntable. You know, <laughs> I'm like going, these people, you know, they, I mean, these things probably have like eight grams of pressure. They're just like mm -hmm. digging a trench in the record. And I'm like going, I don't want that record. You go ahead and keep it. You put that thing on there. You can have that sucker, you know? <laughs> okay. Okay, interesting aspects right from the. I start. don't have that. I don't have that. I mean, literally, like I said, there are literally even even new records that if you open, they have a problem. The record stores won't take them back. It's like you know, or 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 they'll say you know you get sixty percent off. Said sixty percent back. That's it. Yeah, the the guy from the Kraftwerk record, the Man Machine, Mensch Machine, uh, uh, now answered and he said he will take the record back. He saw the video. Um, and he said that he also was um, he also was uh, 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 pulled over the tish uh, to table, and and yeah, I said doesn't matter, but you can't sell an or you can't sell a record without a matrix. matrix. Uh, as, the funny thing, a, the funny thing about about it. your video that, that really got me was the guy that wouldn't sell you the record because he thought you were going to resell it. Who cares? Yeah. He's selling. I mean, he's selling the record. It's like if you if you want to get more for your album, then charge more. It, that was a total nuthead, I think. And he said, "No, you. I, I'm afraid you want to sell." He said, "No, I don't want. He has my channel. That is the purpose." Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what's the matter with this, with this guy. Are that are they? Is that all half price? Oh, yeah, half price books here. If they do have a good policy, you can go back and they'll and they'll take anything back within a week. I think you have seven days to return. And I have a half price re books here, right close to my house. I'll actually be going there after this video. So, so yes, they do. But their prices, at least here, are insane. Maybe I'll do a video thumbing through the half price records and show you just how crazy the prices are at the half price books here. It's insane. Oh, I have to. I have to say hello to David uh, first. David last Freeman. He was my third subscriber, and until today, he comments on the, almost every video. Hello, David. <laughs> oh, sure. Is Dave's is Dave's records the one that's kind of a? It's in a, a like a like a very small place. There's one outside of Berkeley as when I'm driving home. That's a very well curated, very small shop, but um. But yeah, it, it's that's a great place. So so there are record stores that will take returns, but like I said, the ones that are local to me aren't aren't very nice about it. And but Patrick, one question to this uh, buying in stores: mm -hmm. Can't you listen in the store? When you no, the well, uh, some store, very few stores here have listening stations. Uh, they yeah. the the beat used to, but not anymore. And and what some uh, the last one I went to the. It had like an old beat up turntable and the stylus was literally you know sideways so. okay <laughs> oh, that's awesome you're getting the humming guru so but next week next wednesday i'm going to dallas and i will spend two days record shopping around the dallas area and mm -hmm. i'll probably go to josie records and try to sell maybe that sealed butcher cover and my sealed doors mono album and we'll see how that goes but um okay. but there's some good record stores in dallas that i like to go to I'll have to go. I think I've probably been there. I just don't know the names of some of the stores because usually when I go down there to records shop, 
I'll just hit like four or five stores in a day and just, and I don't really, I, I know Rasputin's and I know Amoeba and, um, but I don't know the other names. Is there, and, and there's some good stores like in, in Santa Rosa, Nevada, like um, Red Devil and the last record store, if it's still open. I've been there in a while. When, when, you, when you buy records in, in the States um, and go to a regular shop uh, or those chains, is it common that they have a used record section or is it not that common? No, no not like Best Buy. Best Buy has, has like a record. I mean, I don't have like a really big record store that keeps new records like all the time. Like, like the two, like the big record store, not big, but it's called the cave. And, um, mm -hmm. and, um, so they have, they have, they get you, they get new records in, but not like they just buy what they want. They don't have like, you know, like, like a, like a, like a Barnes and Noble or something would have like just a lot of new records. They intersperse the new records with the used records, which pisses me off. Mm -hmm. I hate it when record stores have used records and new records together because you're, 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 yeah, of course, you're, yeah. you're flipping through like, damn it, you know, yeah. you get excited, you see the cover, go, oh, shit, it's a, it's a reissue, shit, you know, it's like, damn. Yeah, but how do you keep it for yourself? Do you keep the used or the records that you bought used together with the records you bought new? No, I have, I have mm -hmm. on this wall over here, I have all the new records and, and mm -hmm. audio file reissues. Mm. um together mm. and then so you keep it, them separated to you yeah, I'm, i'm doing the same now i i, so I have I, that I, and then yeah. i have my jazz and i have my 12 inch singles and then i have my a to z normal stuff in the closet yeah yeah i understand that i see uh, yeah so someone asked about the humming guru i i love the humming guru harry harry um harry's record room Just did a video, on, a couple of videos on the Hum and Guru. I could echo, I, I could echo his sentiments on, on that. I actually we we discussed it. He he purchased his on our discussion. So he comes with a very good price value, right? Yeah, Hum and Guru. yeah. So so go if you want to know a little bit more about it, you can go to Harry's channel and see his videos. And I, and you should subscribe to Harry. Harry's a great guy, one of the nicer people in the vinyl even community. Even as a German friend, Patrick, imagine that. Oh, yes. But Harry's <laughs> a great guy, and he used to own a record store. Super, super generous. I mean, you should go subscribe to his channel no matter what. So, Seal Butcher, go for it. When I was there three years ago at Josie Records, the guy offered me sight unseen $2,500. So, I'll go and see what he what, what happens this time. So, We'll see how it goes. Um, I, I, I'm going to try to sell probably the door sealed mono and the autographed mono first and see what they say. So, what do you so, use for cleaning, Michael? What is your, what is your cleaning regimen? What what I what I use for several years now is the audio desk. This is Harry. Harry's music room is right here. Just type that I, in there. I'm, and you'll using, get there. I'm using the audio desk for for a couple of years now. I've now I have the I don't know is it the second or third generation? I don't know. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm quite satisfied. I, I think, to be quite frankly, I haven't found the perfect cleaning machine yet. Uh, probably will never, never be the one. But, but this is very, very decent in, in my opinion. You know the audio desk, Patrick? Yes, I. I it was. It was like the. I started using do-it-yourself ultrasonics probably about 10, 11 years ago. So. So I had my I had my 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 brother-in-law build me a, a, a little rotator. You know, mm -hmm. he actually built it, and so I had a I had like a, I still had the original ultrasonic machine I had, you know, and and I would like you know turn it on and you know spin it. Then I got a bigger one with more transducers. Then I got the Kermus, and then and now I have the the Humming Gurus. So so I progressed along the way, and yes. Mm -hmm. So somebody asked, um, oh, somebody's talking about Waterloo Records. Yes, Waterloo. I've been to Waterloo Records. There's, there's a couple of them in Austin now, aren't there? And that's a pretty good store. I thought the prices were a little eh, iffy for me. I've heard of the Isonic. The Isonic is kind of like the Kermis. I think it's actually based on the Kermis. They, they, they both took a Chinese um, ultrasonic tank and kind of converted it to their purposes, you know, and... There's Harry with his Harry's music room. Is that a first date butcher cover? No, it's a paste over, but it's but it's intact. It's it's sealed. I had the Kermis, and the Kermis. The problem with the Kermis was is that 
I didn't I didn't think it got things it doesn't get things as clean as the humming guru does. Maybe it's because of the frequency or maybe it's because how how the humming guru has very little water and and I, I, I don't know enough about the technology to, to 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 discuss it, but I know I, I know that I prefer the humming guru to the Kermis personally. Any specific reason? It just works better and it's easier for me. It dries. It also dries itself. I mean, I, I can just turn around. I can just grab a record, pull it out, turn around, drop it in, set it, forget it. 10 minutes later, boom, yeah. redo it, drop it again, rinse it. And I'm done. You know, instead of having to go in the garage, sit in the garage and put it in there and let it spin, stop. And then, you know, go dry it off with my, with my, VPI. I haven't used my VPI in months. So mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, the Vital Sonic is that is that knockoff that, that definitely looks like the Humming Guru. So Patrick, in questions a question yeah. about an original or, or, or about the topic of originals. Um okay, which, which which original would you take when it comes to Bob Marley? Jamaican? British? You know, to be honest, I've never heard, a, I don't think I've ever heard an original Jamaican Bob Marley. I don't think I've ever heard one, but I have had Jamaican vinyl but here. They are and, out there, right? Yes. They are out there. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I've never heard a Jamaican vinyl that, that was, that was very good sounding. I mean, I mean, the, it's very, they're very noisy in the ones I've heard. Now I have, I have the, hang on a second. Let me go grab this. this sure. Is, sure. Listen to chat. I mean, okay, it was quite. So I have this. <laughs> so I have this. Yeah, which is a German box set from 1982. Okay, it's unique. It's they only made uh, I think uh, 10,000 of these, and they actually destroyed the plates after it. it has different covers, and uh, mm -hmm. but it was uh, it was done at um, at Alsdorf, you know, where it is at, at the Alsdorf wrecking pressing plant in germany mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this is this sounds this says this sounds very different than like the the u.s sterling or the uk sterling so so i yeah, have yeah. as Dougie says but you yeah. say different not better not 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 worse but different different so mm -hmm. so i i don't know i don't know which mixes this that box set uses but it probably goes mm -hmm. for about 400 now But uh, mm -hmm. but that that's an interesting box set, and I have I've I've done UK Marleys and I've done US Marleys, and I think they're all, they were both done at Sterling. If they were both done at Sterling, exactly. it really that's doesn't matter. That's my next question because Sterling probably sent the plates all over the world, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So they probably used doesn't matter if it's UK or US because they used the same plates, right? So. Does it make sense to to make a distinguishing between a UK and a an, uh, US pressing when it comes to Bob Marley, for example? Probably not, because as long as the vinyl's comparable, then mm -hmm. yes. So it, it's kind of the same thing. Like, like I think I, we brought this up last week was like like mm -hmm. Queen a Day at the Races. You know, mm -hmm. the original UK was a mm -hmm. Sterling George mm -hmm. Marino, and mm -hmm. the original US was a Sterling George Marino. So I wouldn't spend extra money to get the UK. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when the u.s when they both share the same plates so jason says they sound okay but you know the vinyl quality is not going to be great of course it will i mean the ab 1006 steely dan asia is kind of like the the creme de la creme of the asias even you can you can even get the ones that have the b etched out that has the a re-etched And it and it's still the AB. It's one of those cases where the AA, the first the first letters sound worse than the first one, which is the AB. And if you can get the Columbia Santa Maria pressing, it'll have like a little lazy S on it, um, and that's that sounds a little bit better than the other pressing plants. But yeah, for sure. I mean, that's is it's going to be hard. It's going it's to be hard for for Chad to beat that pressing, in my opinion. Is Asia one of those uh, records where you where you say? Almost any pressing sounds great, except for the Mofi. <laughs> the original Mofi of that to me sounded Let's, horrible. We don't go the horrible. Today. <laughs> okay, when when did, 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 did this one came out? It's long ago. It's the first Mofi round, right? 
Yeah, I think it was like maybe 80, 81, 82. Mm -hmm. Same time as like the, the, the dark side of the moon and the iRobot and the year of the cat. I totally I dislike the dark side of the moon. Always have. Always have. From MoFi, by the way. Yeah, people people used to say that, but then again, you know, when I when I was when I was in high school and college, and you know, I had my equalizer. Every one of my friends, we would have the goal wing EQ setting where you would like kill the mids and you'd raise the bass and the treble, and it looked like a like a wing, like like a goal wing. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's what a mofi sounded like to me. It was like they scoop the mids and they boost the bass and they boost the treble, and that that was kind of what we liked back then. At least me and my friends did. And then uh, after a while, you know, you kind of change and you go, wait a minute, that's that sounds a little bit fatiguing after a while. So are you talking about the the Marley's? I mean, if they share the same plates, it's really the same thing, you know, un unless the vinyl quality is a little bit different. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Al Disco Devil has sent me I have a whole stack of like freaking like like reggae and, and funk dub stuff up here that he sent me that I that I had need to get to but this is an interesting comic oh, okay. <laughs> the gold wing <laughs> yes Wait I know um, if it has the same griddle as me as a Michelin star chef I cannot assume my dish will taste as good that's a little bit different analogy I mean I mean it's like a, pl a, a plate at a restaurant has food on it you know so plates in a record is just the actual music it's plating. You know, it's not like there's anything extra. It's not, that's not really a good analogy, <laughs> you know. That's like saying, you know, yeah. Look, it's everybody's favorite buddy, Chris Carson. <laughs> yeah, he's famous. With I've, his... I've never seen a, an RL, I've never seen a white label promo of Led Zeppelin 2, although I think uh, JBL has one that he said he might send me, and um, I think he said it was an RL. Yes, I agree, Zeb. But I mean, back then I was, you know, me and my friends, we were we were like young, stoned and stupid. And just we just, you know, that's that's what you did. Exactly. It, that's very well put. You just did it without knowing anything. Yeah. Yeah. Talk yeah. about what do we what do you want to talk about? Pieces of vinyl. Oh, reggae and funk. I am not a reggae and funk um, aficionado. I've, I've been fortunate that people have sent me a lot of funk albums and I'm learning a lot about it. But I, I'm definitely not. An expert on that stuff, man. Not my realm at all. But, come but on, I do stream have a, a little, stream a little, little Marley this week. Okay. Excellent. I've, okay. Yeah. Wh okay. Which version do you want to hear? <laughs> the best, Patrick. The best. Mm -hmm. That's where you're here for. <laughs> Just kidding. <clears throat> Patrick, can it be? All right. Second? Hold on a second. Hold on. Will, will Stunty if? If, if it was pressed, if it was plated at Sterling by George Marino and sent and sent over to England, um, are you saying that that they net, do they do they not re-etch at some point? I don't know how that goes because I've I've seen I've seen like Led Zeppelin four where it says Pecco and Pecco Duck and George Piro's symbols in the same in in the same dead wax. So how could they both? be etched at the same time are you saying george piros and, and george peckham were in the same mastering studio etching together so do they not they had to have re-etched it right correct let me know in the comments below i want to say that but um yeah so the most recent pink floored reissues if they're okay you know they're i mean there's yeah. other pressings that are better but i mean how much are you willing to spend and no matter, even though Bernie Grumman says he hates digital, he seems to love these. But um, but digital, digital Patrick, digital is like a disease. Quote. Bernie <laughs> <Grumman>. <laughs> digital is like that it's was like a, a tough one, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that was a tough one. But you're not really you're not really doing anything. Once you send the plates over, it, it, it's like okay, well, as long as the pressing plant is good, you know, it's not going to really. There's no real di no changes that I can think of, but I could be wrong. Yeah, but Patrick, when I remember correctly, the only difference between the Joni Mitchell box set was the was pressing the plant. Pressing plant, and the difference was, and that does make a difference. That does make a difference. 
So I'm not saying it doesn't make a difference, but from a mastering from a mastering perspective, it really shouldn't. It, it shouldn't exactly. Yeah. exactly. From a mastering difference. Yeah. Yeah, so that that's what I was saying, Stunty. So so if you if you strike it, then you can add the matrix numbers when you ship the plates, right? Isn't that how they would do that? Because I have I have Japanese I have a Japanese pressing of Into the Outdoor with UK with UK matrix on it. Not I don't know what the matrix is, but um I don't know. I, I'd have to go look. But I, I know I've seen George Piros's markings on a Peco Duck Led Zeppelin IV, and so that, that that always struck me as interesting. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there are, I mean, they don't sound bad by by any stretch of the imagination. And for seventeen dollars, you're going to be hard pressed to find something. It was kind of like the Hendrix stuff, you know, the 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 Hendrix family. Excuse me, you know, like Electric Ladyland and Are You Experienced and Access Bold as Love. You're going to be hard pressed to find something better for like fifteen, sixteen, seventeen dollars. That's, right. that's that's a great deal. I mean, and, and they don't sound bad, you know. So and, and maybe you agree or maybe you disagree, but apple and oranges now. But if I compare the quality of the Pink Floyd remaster and the quality of the digitalized uh, uh, Led Zeppelins, I'd go for the Pink Floyd. That they are relatively seen way better than the actual uh, Led Zeppelins. The one that uh, patched it. Yeah, I mean, I, I I would probably say that the Pink Floyds are better than the Led Zeppelins, from what I've heard for sure, in my opinion. Mm. I haven't heard anything good about Scorpio jazz stuff. I'm not a jazz person, but I've heard nothing but bad stuff about Scorpio. That's just me. Okay. I think I don't know if, if Chad, maybe Michael, can speak to this about. I, I think he did the classic plates. I know he did the classic plates for the Jethro Tull UHQR. I know that for a fact because I have the I have yeah, the original. He for sure, he for sure uh, used the, the yeah. classic plates because uh, otherwise he couldn't do it all analog because most, uh, Columbia slash Sony, as we all know, <laughs> no doesn't get out any tapes. So it goes back to the classic. Uh, Which method. isn't a bad thing. I mean, I, I would like to think, I mean, go go gather up the old Vertigo plates and start pressing those. I don't care. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. like if it sounds good, it sounds good. Exactly. How often does that happen, Stunty? Just out of curiosity. I know my nose. I have. I mean, I could do that. I mean, I could do that within through the outdoor because I have. I have. I have. I have a UK. I mean, I have a US and I have a Japanese. That the, the, they're both. They're both. They both have the same plates from Strawberry. So I could do that. I could do that test if you want. I've oh, never that's... heard that record, to be honest with you. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Hey, Rev. Yeah, could it be that the vinyl is worn out? Have you had an Animals OG, Patrick, so far? And how? Oh it... yeah, I have. I have two in my closet. I have the very first pressing. It's it's probably one in my top five favorite albums. So. So Muddy way and better, Wooly, way I... better than the new remasters. What would you say? It's. Probably about twenty percent better, I would say. Okay, that's quite a lot, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I would, but I mean, if it sounds muffled, um, I don't think it sounds. I don't think it's ever sound muffled. But I mean, I, I've listened to that record since I was a kid. I used to put headphones on, get stoned, close my door, and hope my parents never came in for like a week. And you know, I would listen to that stuff twenty four seven. But that's just you know. Um, all right, it doesn't happen anymore. That's interesting. I've never heard the MOV reissue. I have the Audio Fidelity, which sounds great. The Audio Fidelity Diamond Life sounds phenomenal. And I have the box set and I have the original US and I've had the original UK. I think the US was a Franklin Wayne mastering, I think. Um, but I mean, it's a great sounding record anyway. I don't think I've ever heard a bad version of that record. But if you, if, if you start with the box set and start moving your way up, you go, wow, that sounds a little bit better. That sounds a little bit better. And so you get to the point um, where you get to the audio fidelity, which is the best sounding one that I've ever heard, and that one sounds great. Yeah, I don't think Pink Floyd doesn't sound bad. Period. I mean, it's one of those things where, where you know, it's a great sounding record. It's a great sounding record. You know, you're going to have good ones. 
All right, so which budgie reissues are you talking about? There were two reissues. There's the noteworthy ones that they did. Um, they did Never Turn Your Back on a Friend, In for a Kill, and Bandolier. And those were actually cut by Greg Moore, I think, at Final Tweak. And those ones came from the tapes. And the ones that, that uh, no, the MC, those were MCA. The, the noteworthy ones are the budge, budgie did themselves. And those were not cut from the original tapes. And those do not sound well. The three MCA ones, Never Turn Your Back on a Friend, In for a Kill, and Bandolier were all cut by from the tapes. They sound fantastic. And um, and so those are the ones you want to get, And but they're a little bit pricey now. A little bit means around what, what price area? 40, 50 bucks, I think. Um, not, as, not as much as a MoFi, Patrick. <laughs> well, Budgie's not or really, analog production, to be fair. But but Budgie's not really a MoFi type band, you know. They're 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 kind of a niche band, but but I love them. I mean, they're they're people you who like this, Budgie love them. You so. know, these niche kind bands uh, can get the most collectible after some decades. Look okay. at some of those crowd rock bands; it's unbelievable sometimes. Pretty common. I haven't, I haven't listened to the War Greatest Hits, so that's one. I think I actually had that coming. That's the one that was cut recently that everyone's been raving about, the War Greatest Hits. So I had that coming, and I will listen to that. I have never seen one either, and I, I haven't heard a ton, so I'm, I'm not one to talk because I, I don't have a ton of Jamaican experience, so yes. Okay, I think you can probably get a better version than the Hong Kong version of Journey Escape. I'm just saying, but I'm pretty sure. I mean, that's not a great sounding record either. That 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 one was EQ pretty funky. I mean, the the some of the journeys, and I I've actually have had the the MoFi Journey Escape that was pulled, um, that only had that goes for like three grand. So someone sent me that, and it's not the best sounding version that I have by far of, of Journey Escape. The Robert Ludwig is the best sounding one of Journey Escape. Pet sounds. I have the DCC and I have and I have the analog productions. I don't think I have the 50th anniversary. And I have the Carl and the Passions um, two two for that came out. Um, you know the war. Someone so that's a here's a band that's hard. Like where I live, um, trying to find war albums. If you see them, they're always beat to shit. I don't know. I mean, I mean, every, war is one of those bands that. If you do see them, they're always beat up. I have four Yellow Jackets albums on vinyl. So, yes, I have them. You second that, Patrick? Is that the Universal reissue that came out in like 2000, early 2000s? Um, you know, the mono the mono version that, that Abbey Road cut, Half Speed Mastered. I know Michael loves the Abbey Road Half Speed Masters. <laughs> but um, <laughs> No, I'm very, what, how do you like it? The 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 one the of Disraeli Road. gears. No, yeah, the Abbey Road, the mono. Of uh, I think it's great. <laughs> I I would have. First, this is the first first time, by the way, that we totally disagree. I, I maybe I have to go get back into it, but but I totally disliked it. But okay, I have to go into it again. I I, I will need to compare it to. I have an original U, original UK. I don't think I have a US Disraeli gears. I don't even know if 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 Disraeli gears came out in mono in the US. I'm not positive if it did or not. Someone let me know. Um, but yeah, I will have to compare it. And then the war reissues are very good. What did I recommend, Eddie? Sorry, chat scrolling and I'm having a hard time keeping up. I apologize. Um, the MC albums. The three that I talked about from MCA were In for the Kill, Never Turn Your Back on a Friend, and Bandolier Zip. So, yes. Oh, here we were just touching on this a minute ago. So you said that in Germany that MoFi prices were going down in the secondary market. No, it's not only that they are going down because the people who contacted dealers, they simply got denied and said, no, I don't take your MoFis. No, I don't sell them because I got a, a phone call every day. That's the situation right here. Yeah. Journey Infinity is another one of those records that doesn't sound really great. You know, you can probably get a white label promo for like maybe 10 bucks, and that's going to be about as good as it gets. I think Kevin Gray, let me go look at my at my thing here. I think Kevin Gray might have done Infinity for Friday music, but I didn't think it sounded 
very good either. Yeah, he did Friday. Yeah, Kevin Gray did Infinity for Friday Music, and it doesn't sound that great either. So just go out and get the general pressing, and that's about as good as it's going to get. Oh, did you get it, Eddie? That's awesome. I, I'm curious how it sounds. I, why don't you do like a do one of your do one of your 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 spinning videos with it? I'm very curious to hear how it sounds. I'd love to see, hear that. Yes, the RST box set of War is great. Although it's probably cut from digital, it sounds great. Ah, oh, there's Lavelle. Hey, Lavelle, another person you should go subscribe to. Lavelle's a great guy. No, knows his shit. Finds. Finds Especially more when crowd it comes to jazz. He's a lot find, into, he knows into his kraut rock. He finds more kraut rock. Yeah, really? he lives. Exactly. He did a can video. I loved it. Yeah. I'm like, well, where do you find this shit, Lavelle? He's like, oh, I found this can, you know, freaking <laughs> monster movie at my local record store today. And I'm like, going, what the Another hell? Not an dude? OG monster movie, did he? Wow. Yeah, he, he finds all that shit. Wow. Okay. See, your buddy John Bandy agrees with me. See? Surprisingly, you disagree. With, surprisingly, John Bandy disagrees with you, Rob. Who would Michael. have thought that? <laughs> I never would have thought that John Bandy would have disagreed with you, Michael. Yeah. See, and look, Doctor Winston O Boogie agrees with me as well. Yeah. Ba ba ba. Let's end the stream now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's hard to find an RL with both sides on the on the Love Over Gold, but those are those are beautiful. I mean, there's not a bad sounding Love Over Gold. I mean, that's just a beautifully recorded record. Um, I, someone offered to send me the. Record Store Day, Miles, Abbey Road, Half Speed Master. I might do it just for the hell of it. Um, but Disraeli Gears, the UK stereo, I have that. Um, I have the mono. Um, I've never heard the Japanese, and I do like the Half Speed Cut at Abbey Road. Um, so for for Cream, I, I found that the original U.S., of uh, fresh cream sounds a little bit better than the UK reaction that I have. Um, and the DCC though, of fresh cream sounds amazing. That's, but that's stereo with four mono tracks, I think, but that, that's really pricey, but, but you can get like the U S cream here for pretty reasonable, you know, and those things were built on the old Atco label and they're like indestructible, you know, I mean, those things are like built like a tank, you know, that, that I'm vinyl. Not, is never way, that's so funny that we talk about it today. I've ordered an Alan Parsons and I got the German first pressing cream, fresh cream as the stiffer. I'm not kidding. Huh. You. <laughs> That's what I I, 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 I got Prince Purple Rain one time as a stiffener mm -hmm. and I sent it to, I sent it to Nick Pantazzi. It cleaned up really nicely. I had a ZZ Top Tejas someone sent as a stiffener. I cleaned it up and gave it to somebody. It was like, Hey, so the OG, the first album, the Cars, the OG Cars first album sounds miles better than the MoFi. The rest of the MoFi Cars ones are, are, are better in that term, but the difference between the original Cars self-titled and the MoFi are night and day. If you prefer the MoFi, then you might want to check your system, honestly. I mean, I should that should be another one of the audiophile challenges. I'd be, you know. <laughs> Sacktown River. It's not my name. Here we go again. <laughs> How much did that German pressing cost you? Just out uh, of where curiosity. Did and where did you get it? Discord yeah. dealer. I I paid one hundred for mine. It it wasn't it was declared at near mint near mint, and I said okay one hundred. Uh, okay. I think right now the Half Speed Masters from Abbey Road are desirable because they're out there. You know, they're they're kind of like the flavor of the month, and and it, it's it, it's and they have great packaging. They've got the little 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 fake obi on there. You know, that reminds people of Japanese pressings. They're really good at marketing. Um, they are, they are. I tend to say that's what they are at best. Mofi Brothers in Arms, I have it. But I haven't done any comparisons. I have the Robert Ludwig double, and I have what there. There's a single version that was an original, and I have the Bernie Grunman box set that was or the Chris Bellman box set that was cut in 2012. Um, Patrick, general question: Dire Straits, UK pressings, US pressings, original? Um, Dire Straits first album. I like the original US on I mean, the original UK on Vertigo. Um, mm -hmm. That one sounds phenomenal. Um, and the MoFi sounds good. The U.S. sounds okay. Um, for but in general, uh, UK pressings. 
So no, because no, because then in making movies and mm -hmm. I think um, Communique were cut by a uh, what's that guy's name? Crap, um, Brian o, o, B O G O. I can't remember his name, but um, Brian Hap, uh, uh Brian Hap goes with an H. His last name goes with an H. Um, B H I think is his is his matrix. Yeah. He didn't do he didn't do a lot of stuff, but those U.S. pressings are sound better than anything I've ever heard. Okay. Maybe somebody uh, can, I'm sure somebody can tell first, me. Uh, you're talking first U.S. first press. Yes, mm -hmm. of of um of communique and I think um, making movies. Okay. Okay, so I can't remember his name. I, God, what the hell is his name? Somebody look it up, please. Otherwise, uh, Patrick is totally occupied. I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, man, who the hell did it? What the hell was his name? Oh, God. Yeah, somebody look it up. It's going to drive me crazy. All right. 45 bucks for Dimension Machine. I'm That's sorry, right. You did it. That's great. That's great. In which country uh, do you buy them? Said something you teach me about half speed. He said he doesn't, you know. Yeah. But but then again, you know, I mean, these people, these people that, that you know, like Bernie Grumman saying he doesn't like digital. Yet, like I said, he loved. He says, you know, the the Pink Floyd stuff that I cut from digital sounds phenomenal. So I think it depends on on who they who 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 they're talking to. There you go, Bobby Hatta. That's his name. I knew it was B H. Yeah. Yeah, yeah now I can go on. Now I can go on. This is like it's driving me crazy. But, but, but Grantman, the whole topic was, what would you prefer as a source and why do you prefer it as a source? That doesn't mean that he can not also be proud about his digital masterings, I, 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 I'd say, you know? You know, I mean, he was pretty, he was pretty, pretty, pretty down on digital in that video. He, he was, was totally, he totally was, yeah, that we, which know. was a surprise. I, do, I totally agree in that area, of course, yeah, he was. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, so I'm going to start throwing in when I can, I'm going to start throwing in Abbey Road Half Speed Masters on these audio file challenges, because honestly, I, I, I think that, I, and I'm guilty of it too, everyone's guilty of it, you know, you you get this preconception in your mind that yeah. something's going to be better or something's going to be worse. And if you, and if I'm, if I'm doing, if I'm listening to something and I know that it's a MoFi, I'm pretty much instantly going to be a little bit against it because that's just my personal bias. I'm not a huge MoFi guy. And if I hear something that, that's, that's an original, I'm going to be a little bit more for it because that's, that's, that's where I lean. If I don't know either, then I'm forced to use just what I, what I, my gut feeling and my hearing to, to say, okay, this is the one I like better. And then you find out later um, which one's best. So, so there's people that have done these audio file challenges that I've done that have responded and they go, shit, I, I had no idea. Once I find out what it is, they go, oh, well, I didn't want that. <laughs> you know, you know, people, people that say, shit, I picked the MoFi or shit, I picked the original, you know? And so that, that, that's, I think it's best to to save those kinds of comparisons when you don't know the sources, because you are biased. Everyone is, I think. You can't you can't uh, deny that, of course. You you. Are. I love freehand. I but have the original you, UK. But the art is to to somehow get over it. And that's so I don't know. I don't. I haven't heard Stephen Wilson's. When did that come out? I have the. I have the reissue that was on the really thick vinyl. It doesn't sound as good as the original UK, but I haven't heard the, the remix, I don't think. Oh, excuse me. Silly in what way? High or low? Sorry, I, I just... I don't... Put you... I think the originals are all analog. The original Craftworks are all analog. Yeah. The reissues aren't all analog. No, they aren't, and okay. and they are different, really different. They really got into them and changed. Is that is that on a? I think that's a. I think that's a pressing plant. I'm not sure. Is that a Canadian album? Let me know in the comments below. Give me an example of of the record you're talking about, Richard. That would be the best thing. Yeah, the original Freehand is great. I love the original Freehand. I love Gentle. I love Gentle Giant in general. Uh oh, John Bandy, A, D, S, D, A is not the same as A. Let's not go down that road. <laughs> uh, 
There you go. Goldwing EQ. There you go. <laughs> Clary and car stereo. I had a I had a correct power play with the with the big fat hot EQ power amp that probably had like 17% distortion. My What's your favorite craft work. My favorite craft work is radioactivity because radioactivity. it's for sure their darkest in my opinion. And this was the first where they went full electronic. And in my opinion, they have never, ever been that much ahead of their time. And, and very few bands have been that much ahead of the time with any album. There has been, of course, but not many. John Dent, wasn't he, wasn't he in Canada? I, I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, allegedly, it's supposed to be transparent, you know, and it and it would probably depend on 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 if they if they actually capture in DSD and don't touch it afterwards and then cut from tape, because if you're gonna if you're gonna edit it, you have to go down to PCM and then that's another conversion. So I, I'm not technical enough to to say that. I have I've had the original on fly and that's a great cover the the original fly label that has the big fly on it those things look so cool but um I I thought the mofi of Electric Warrior sounded great so that's one of the mofis that I thought they did a really really good job on and I haven't compared it to the original so that's something I should probably do but yeah I thought the mofi they did a good job well, uh, although the original is not easy to come by it's it's not a cheap original I already looked that up and this is at least over at Discogs, quite expensive. We're talking T-Rex, Electric Warrior, right? Oh, John John Dent. I thought John Dent was was might have been a UK engineer. So, so you got a you got a US copy of Ram for me, and it had John Dent on it. Oh, shit, maybe I should have looked at it more closely. <laughs> yeah, I've, I have the Craftwork Two on Philips, and the Craftwork One was on Philips too. Had the little pylons on the cover. One was green and one was orange, I think. Oh, EW is on a copy of RAM. Okay. <laughs> yes, the Mo I thought the Electric Warrior and the Kevin Gray one was good too. I haven't compared those two either. So Kevin Gray did an Electric Warrior, a single one for Rhino. Okay. Barry in the dead wax. I've never seen a Barry in the dead wax of anything. Is that a U.S.? Is it a U.K.? I'd like to. Go, if you can, if you can, like, uh, well, you can't post a Discogs link, but I had a Craig cassette. Michael. Hello, help me understand the audio file, but digital is no go, or is it okay as long as you know ahead of the time? Knowing ahead of the time is quite significant in my opinion, but it's for sure not a no go. There are great sounding um, digital um, versions or, or digital recordings out there and albums and reissues, but um, somehow you have to keep your buzzwords in store and, 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 and be honest with the people. What do you have to expect and what, what do you get? But it's not a no-go if it's uh, digital. Or you say, no, I don't want any digital record in my shelf. This is, that is, of course, also legit. But I also have a commenter, he says, I only get gatefolds. Also legit, but you have to know, is it a gatefold or not? Is it digital or analog? Just want to know up front. I don't know if I've done an original U.S. stereo. I've done the mono, as you know, but you know, to me, RAM is should be heard in mono. Personally, I, that's that's my thing. Um, Harry asked about Speaker's Corner. I've had good luck with Speaker's Corner, but I, I think some of the bloom is coming off the rose a little bit for some of their stuff. I think some of their stuff has been bettered by other reissues, but I think in general they do a good job and they have quality and they care. You know, they're although we already talked about it, but the the uh, uh, eye in the sky was quite obvious. Huh? I, yes, that was a huge difference. That was a huge difference, and and that 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 might be the next audiophile challenge that I do. Is is <laughs> this would be an easy, but 
You know I, th I, I thought Bob Dylan Desire was going to be an easy one, and but, and, but and, and it wasn't. You do that, when you do that, and this will be really interesting because it's really obvious when you put on the record, on your record player, sit down and listen to both with a stereo equipment. And honestly, this, if you, if you uh, make this uh, vote, at least 95% should say MoFi is better. If not, it's also something about uh, comparing things via YouTube and all this compression. There are losses, aren't there? When you do that, but you can tell. I mean, it, I mean, it, you don't. You can, you can, I you can tell. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, but will, will yeah. you will you get the full one hundred percent fucking you know experience? No, but 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 can you tell if one's better than the other? Yes, that's the, exactly, and that's why I say this has to be a very clear choice if you do that. In my opinion, in my don't you agree that there couldn't be want two outcomes I, I, there, there really shouldn't be i mean but yeah. but i mean the, the bob dylan desire to me was the same way you know but i mean people were like going oh the energy on the on, on the original and i'm like oh god i mean you know who am i to say you know if you like it you like it to answer this question the uk the uk first pressing is the best sounding one that i've heard <clears throat> i agree sergeant pepper is best in mono i agree with that Okay, say it again. Sergeant I Sergeant Pepper Pepper's, Pepper's is best in mono. I, I like Sergeant Pepper better in mono than in stereo. That's and you, give a, give a bit a little more flesh. Why? It just sounds thicker. Um, it just it just it just sounds more more direct in your face. It doesn't meander a bit, and it just seems mm -hmm. I don't know it just seems right to me. I remember the first time I heard it in mono, a UK pressing in mono. I just mm -hmm. went wow. You know, it just kind of grabbed me, you know, now the white album's not the same, you know, the white album doesn't, but I mean, anything else almost, I prefer the Beatles in mono in general. I do. Okay. Interesting. Um, except for like magical mystery tour. And, um, I can listen let to it, rubber soul let, and revolver. Let it, be, like, let it be more in stereo, right? No, well, let it be. There's no <laughs> dedicated mono mix of let it be. But I Beatles for Sale, Beatles for Sale is the only early, early Beatles albums that I prefer mm -hmm. in stereo than in okay. than in mono. Only Beatles so, for Sale. So from the early to the later stuff, you prefer the mono whenever there is a dedicated mono. That's cool. pretty in, in general. I mean, I, like I said, I can listen to Rubber Soul and Revolver in mm -hmm. stereo, no problem, and enjoy. It. And Sgt. Pepper, I can enjoy it in stereo. Mm -hmm. But I so rarely pull out Beatles albums to listen to anymore because I've recorded them so many times I can't imagine, that, yeah. that that it's like and I enjoy them every time I do but mm -hmm. but I mean I have hundreds of Beatles recordings that I've done mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. I'm actually right now I'm going through the US catalog because I've never never ripped the US catalog before so I'm, okay. I'm going through those before I sell them you know so and let's stick a little bit uh, to the Beatles because I'm really getting into it now because I'm buying them um, I hear that it's not only the first pressing. You have to get the early first pressing, at least in some cases. For example, Mono Revolver. You have to get the really early, early first pressings, especially with the Revolver, right? With the with this hotter cut. And, and, and are you talking that. about the Mono or the Stereo? I'm talking about the Mono right now. So all the Mono, all the Mono Beatles albums were all cut with with the tube cut system. Every single one of them. All of them, mm -hmm. no matter mm -hmm. what. The, the, the only difference is that one hot cut, the loud cut of of, of revolver, revolver. Mm -hmm. you know. And, and I've had that; it really isn't that different. It's not that huge of a difference, personally. Mm -hmm. It's not that huge of a difference, but but yeah, all of them are all going to be cut cut mono until they went to uh, um cut on the tube cut system until they did the eighty one mono reissues, and those were done solid state, except mm -hmm. that some of them were pressed with the old plates. Um, Parlogram Auctions does a great video on this, detailing the eighty-one, the eighty-one mono reissues to the original mono. He did that. that that's a he, he knows that he knows his shit. He does this stuff really, really well. Um, Parlogram Auctions. Now the stereo stuff is another story because yeah. the, the stereo stuff you can get. You need to get the tube cut pressings if you want that that warm tube cut sound. And most of those are minus one, minus one matrix. But there is a there are differences and there's, I used to have a, I used to have a, like, like a little chart that told me what they were. And you go on the Steve Hoffman forums and search for, mm -hmm. 
for tube cut. I'll, I'll see. I'll see if I can find it while we're talking. But um. Okay, then I I, I answer Luke's question. Yes. Okay, four best German bands: Emmendul, Can, Scorpions, and Kraftwerk. I I personally would skip Scorpions. <sighs> No. Yeah, I know, Patrick. I know. I'm personally <laughs> would skip Scorpions. Oh, I that's would bad. Korn against Neu and Emmendul against Faust. Oh, Faust can you, I'm going to put this in a private chat. Can you post that? Yes, I try. Hold on. Go ahead. Keep talking. No, I, I, you said something about private chat. Yeah, I had I, I, it wasn't posted. There you go. You can post it. No, I can't. I can't actually post it. I don't. I don't have that box. Yeah. So those are my German uh, German bands, at least in that area. When you, because most of them are Kraftwerk, crowd rock at the beginning, of course. Later, I don't see them as crowd rock. But you would keep Scorpions inside that list, right, Patrick? Well, I mean, their 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 first album is Kraut Rock. It was the very first album on Brain. Talking about Scorpions, right? Yes, now? their their yeah. first album was the very first, first album, album on the Brain that label. Was the third. That that why I was surprised. First what about album. Accept? What about Halloween? <laughs> what about Rammstein? Ah, uh, Patrick, really? Okay, Rammstein. Difficult. What Difficult. about Faust? Faust? Faust, I, I named Faust. If you would about Grobschnitt. Grobschnitt's a great, great frog band. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but not Kraut. I'd say no. They're yeah. not Kraut rock. No, not at all. Eloy. Eloy Prock. Eloy's oh, Eloy. Yeah. Eloy's okay. Yes, I love I love the Scorpions. Scorpions are probably in my top ten favorite bands. Really? That's, <laughs> yes. that's nice to hear. German bands. See. I love the Scorpions. I, I celebrate their entire catalog. Well, up to uh, up to like a certain point. So, did you post that? Because that that's those are the matrix numbers to look for for the UK tube cut stereo and tube cut mono. What I posted in the chat. Posted in the chat. Sure, you can. I like so, control. here we go. I did it. Yeah. So Thanks. that is. So so that, that that gives you a list of all of the matrices. You know that that they they've determined are between the tube cut and the mono, so stereo and mono. It's very informative. So if you want to know, go just just keep that handy, and it'll it, and it'll it'll serve you well. Cool. Thanks. There you go. Ay yeah yeah. This is a complete video. <laughs> if you have a holy gray, if if there's a band or genre you feel need to explore more, yes. Of course, there are quite some right now. Of course, I, I, am, on, I am on the learning curve, and this is one of the many reasons why Patrick is here, that I go into OGs, which really keeps me right now. And, and, and But a genre I would to get into more is, yeah, something, something like the 80s, uh, 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 IDM, I always say IDM, uh, industrial music. I, I, I really have to the feeling that I have to get deeper into Einsturz and the Neubauten. I, I didn't like them in the time, but I think nowadays I will like them more. So, what's your holy grail? What is what is the one record that you that you feel you at the, t today? Because I know it changes. Um, Ask me tomorrow. Yes, um, but today. Today's Holy Grail? Pa. Ay, ay, ay. I mean, because because you're like I me, you know. You... To be honest, I get this very early and and hot cut of uh, of Revolver Beatles next week, and I can't wait to get that. I really want to hear it. I mean, That's I mean, I, I, I've spent I, I've spent a, a lot of money on a single record before, and I know you have too. You know, so so. So I mean, it, it's not a question of of, of cost. It, it's really a question no, of sure. availability. No, no, no. A question of no, no. availability, no, no, and, and like no, no. you know, no, and, I really, and it's actually, yeah. and it's actually one really of those want things. To hear, is there a difference to the mono box? I, but, I really but, do to I, but you know, I've sat there and I've seen a record that I want really badly, and it never goes down in price. And then finally one day I'll sit there and I'll go, okay, I'm going to buy it. 
and mm. and it's and it's almost a letdown when I get it. It's almost a letdown. I'm like going, oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Now I have what, it. What you know? should it's I like, do now? <laughs> it's like, damn, you know. <laughs> I was expecting that. I feel now like uh, the king of the hill, but I don't. So you know, so I, I got oh. that Pink Floyd, the the UK Nimbus cut that I've wanted mm -hmm. to get back in my collection for years, like ten yeah. years, okay. and I finally said, fuck it. I had I had an auction. I did well. I said, "All right, I'm going to I'm going to to spend the nine hundred dollars to get this record back in my collection." Uh, and I got it. It was beautiful. It was perfect. I listened to it. I recorded it. It was like everything I thought it could be. And now it's in my closet on a shelf. You know, and <laughs> yeah, where else? you can't put it on your pillow at night. I'm like I'm like damn, you know. And but 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 I, now I have to like you know now. I'm, then the next one was Van Halen Balance, and I now I have that coming, and so now I'm kind of like going, well, what do I go? Where do I, I go? Because you talked about it, and I'm not very much into Van Halen, so please explain me why is this Van Halen so special? You you talked about the price, really expensive. Why is that? Because so it was only released very limited in, on vinyl, because okay. it was in the, it was in the '90s, and so it was a very ah, limited, right. limited, limited edition. You know, so yeah. so yeah. I've never heard the CD, but I'm not I'm not a CD guy, so I can't tell you. People say it's very good, so yeah. So, but important topic because there are quite some uh, reissues upcoming. Uh, for example, Cure, Wish, Wish, Wish. When when it, those '90s stuff is incredibly expensive. What is your Van Halen better? Is it better than a reissue, the '90s original? Do it, uh, it there's say? never been a reissue. There's never been a reissue. So. Ah, only one. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay. So all the Sammy Hager era of Van Halen's have never been reissued ever. So there's some good questions. So so this statement I would agree with. I, I'm really into 12 inch singles right now. I'm very much so into them because I think they all sound great. And that sometimes they have like B sides. But I mean, I love that. People have been sending me. I probably have 10 or 15 recordings of Echo and the Bunnymen. 12 inch singles that that sound phenomenal and i and, and i i love them this is a good question um i'll let you go first <laughs> no, no 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 i can't okay. answer that question i can't answer that i've only i've only heard there's there's a pressing i think it's minus f minus f in the dead wax the u.s pressing um that is and I, i've recorded it once it sounds great it's phenomenal um i have um i think it's a german pressing with us uh with with us plates so they sent the us plates to germany which which atlantic did for quite a few bands like uh, david crosby if i can remember my name so quite a few times they would send them the us plates over there and they would press them i have that one and that one's good i did not like the bernie grunman reissue i thought it was very muddy but one thing that i got yesterday just was the the new the deja vu cut by Chris Bellman. I got this and I just finished listening to this. And when did it come out, Patrick? When did I think this, this came out this year or last year? Ah, this one. Okay. It's also in the box set, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think okay. it's the same mastering as the box set. Okay. And I thought this thing sounded great. I thought it sounded mm -hmm. and I haven't compared it to the UK plum yet, but there are things in here that I thought I'd never heard before on it. I've, on I've compared listening. it once when it came out against the classic. And it hold up really, really good. Although I like the classic, but that this really because I I have the classic and I, th I thought mm. it was a bit muddy. But I'll have to listen to it again. Which which so. one? The S U? It's you know it's so complicated sometimes. Those classic the, with, the with, SB the super buy, vinyl yeah and, and then the one, it's, it's difficult sometimes. Yeah. So it, is Chad going to repress Deja Vu with the classic version? Hmm. I would love if he does. You know, so. We'll see. Yeah, I, I didn't like, I, I didn't really like the classic Crosby, Stills, and Nash. I, 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 I didn't think it was very good. Judas Priest, OG, the, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the original Judas Priest to me are miles better than the reissues. I, I tried a couple of the reissues and I was like going, nope, not for me. Yes. Nope, nope, nope. Um, I don't know. I mean, a 12, yeah, a 12 inch single at 33 RPM is not going to take full advantage as, as a 45 RPM, but if there's less songs on, on the 12 exactly. inch single, you still have better grooves. So yeah, exactly. 
I would agree with that. That 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 that's a good way to put that because I thought it was very very clear. Whereas the like like the UK plum was a little all over the place. Um, but yeah, every instrument was in it was where it should be, and and some of the percussion elements I thought were very crisp in the in the new deja vu. That's a good way of putting it. Clarity. Plus, we got to make sure John's happier so he doesn't do an attack video on Michael. So yeah. I don't know anything about yellow. I have the uh, uh, I've bought this um, remaster reissues, and again I didn't couldn't compare them, so I only have those. And on that basis, I have to say those yellows are great, fantastic sounding records, really cool stuff. Yes, but Lavelle, it was a it was a dream come true. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So somebody asked the. Leon, I don't know. I, I haven't compared Leon the 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 original UK. The original UK "Wish You Were Here" sounds great, you know. But but it, the I love that album so much, and I had the the Nimbus. I wanted to hear what it sounded like on my current system, and so it was one of those things where that album meant meant enough to me that I wanted to get it. Not every album's going to have that emotional connection for me, but for that one, I. I I wanted it so badly. I talked about it all the time, how I wanted that Nimbus cut back in my collection again. And and I, like I said, I okay, finally now, did it. You said it for the third time. Now I have to ask, why did you lost it? And ha you have it because once? Because, I, I mean, my collection is very fluid. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, if, if I don't have like a passion, passionate connection for it, I will, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll sell it and I'll buy something else. At the time I was, I was, at the time I sold it, I was really going through stuff and just buying and selling and just getting stuff. You know, I was, you know, I was, I was getting, you know, rare pressings. I was getting UK quads of, of, of Pink Floyd. I was getting all this stuff, you know, so it was a means to get more stuff into my collection. So I, I didn't keep it. And I thought, well, if I want it back, I can get it again. Cause it was only, I sold it for like 300, you know, I was going, well, if I want to get it back, I can really get it back again. Oh. Then it just kind of went, pfft. You know, okay. way up and there. You, but you digitized this version. Yes, I did. Yes. The one that has gone. And did you digitize this new version also? Yes. Now? Mm -hmm. Have you compared those? No, I'm not. I mean, I, I did a little bit of a comparison, just yeah. just personally, one to one, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and 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 people and and people have told me they say, you know, this one's this one sounds better than the UK. So. Mm -hmm. 80, 80, 90% stunty. I prefer originals. Uh, honestly, if I'm being honest for classic rock, 90%, I prefer the originals easily. So far I've made the same experience, but, um, I haven't compared it to those really really well produced so for example there will be this uh, just total stand up coming this year from analog production as a 45 rpm the whole package and i'd buy be, that <laughs> me, me too. but i mean i love will, this will be interesting when 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 i'm quite sure that everything that is possible will be done and then compare it to the eg og that will be quite interesting, you know. If you get the OG, you have to get the early, early island, pink island UK mm -hmm. pressing. That's the only mm -hmm. one you get. Don't get the US. Don't get any of that no, other I stuff. This, yeah. uh, plum. How is it called? British plum. I have this. Yeah. 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 No, it's it's island. It's pink island. Pink island. Oh, here you go. I know what your answer is for this. I I know what your answer is for this. You're, you're going to say the electric recording company. Yeah, I think it is. I I. Th well, that's another record I've heard from the roof probably is one of your favorite albums you probably yes. heard more copies than me but the copies i've heard the erc is far ahead that that that's a record that deserves a, a full-blown comparison as well because i have the the original us i have mm -hmm. the i have the the mofi i have the erc and i have the rhino so i mean mm -hmm. and, and and i love that record you know that's mm -hmm. that's the only erc i bought it's the only one that i would pony up and buy and I was so excited, you know, mm. but, uh, but I, 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 I think that the ERC sounds great, except for the one track, except for the second song. That, mm. that, 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 you that, know that why? Sounds... You, you know why? Because the tape was damaged, they said, right? Yeah. Exactly. And, they don't, and they don't go into heavy EQing. 
They say yeah. we want, and and I do like that, or I do accept that. Let's put it that way. Quad, Quadrophenia, the original, the, the original first UK pressing, the very very first UK pressing. That I, I think it has like um has like a print. It, there, there's a way to tell if you go on Discogs, it'll tell you. I thought that sounded great. The classic sounds great. The classic Quadrophenia sounds phenomenal. Same thing with Tommy. The original UK sounds great, and the classic sounds phenomenal. But they're two different. They sound very different. So mm. it depends on what you're looking for. What, but what, what does it mean when you say the very, very first pressing? What is the very, very first pressing now? Like the almost originals? Um. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What is the very, very first pressing now? <laughs> that's, that's up for interpretation, you know? Okay. So, so you mean yeah. you get a... a yeah, Mark, a, maybe, maybe we'll stream tonight. Yeah. Maybe maybe you mean you, you have to get lucky and get an early copy from, from the first tempo, or, or what do you mean by that? I mean, you can get granular and say, okay, well, unless it's... Uh, but, you, yeah. but you'd have to find out, you'd have to know what the actual first stamper was, because it's not always 1A, 1A. It's not mm -hmm. always 1 mm -hmm. anything. Like, like the Bob mm -hmm. Dylan, some of the 2As was the first one. So mm -hmm. you don't really know, unless you were there and know, know which one was the actual first stamper, I usually just go by, you know, in the first, you know, if they use the first matrix or the first mastering, you know, I mean, I mean, you can, like I said, you can get so granular with that. And, you know, right. like the almost originals, you know, <laughs> how many years do you go before it's no longer an original? I mean, I don't know. Uh, yeah. True. You know, so. True. I'm going to scroll up. I think I missed, I missed a bunch of stuff. That happens. So. Best sounding, if I could only remember my name. I mean, uh, the the MoFi sounds phenomenal. That was the last all analog MoFi that they did, I think. Um, the no, classic it was all sound. analog. I didn't know that. Yes. Cool, because I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. The, talking the, about the, the super vinyl they put out. Yes. The classic but still, was very I'm good. I'm but but I also said this is a phenomenal song. Right? The classic was very good, and the U.S. original Monarch pressing is very very good. It does, but I always say that, you know, you shouldn't need a $50,000 stereo for an album to sound good. You know, it, it, if a record sounds good, it, could se it, it should sound good on a normal stereo, too. You shouldn't, you shouldn't, it shouldn't take a hundred thousand bucks to make a record sound good. Per, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. I haven't, I, I haven't heard the Half Speed Master Tommy from Abbey Road. I have it, but I have I, not I, heard I, it. I've heard it, it, and I'm, I'm, Quite satisfied with it. Sounds sounds good. Sounds really. I, good. I I like the plangent. I thought the the the, the plangents that I've heard sound very good. Yeah. Are your record sales custom? Yes, they are custom made. This is black steel. You made a video. You had that on a video, right? You actually yeah, talked about yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I sent uh, this person. I, I I gave them my um, my Ambrosia record. Um, that I love so much. Actually, that was that was the first video, first first video I saw of yours that I that that uh, you had a you had a contest or a or a thread saying what's your three best sounding records. This was one of mine. Was this Ambrosia record that Alan Parsons engineered? And that I, this yeah, is a great you, sounding you record. Yeah, I just streamed it the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. last week I think. Yeah. I have that I have to mention now because last time I think I forget it. This. What Patrick does almost every evening, at least during the week, he plays a record which he has uh, digitized. And this is really a fun listening and a fun group of people. If you're interested in this stuff, join over at his channel. It's it's really quite funny and, and a cool group of people and discussing music and making other silly things, right? <laughs> it's a lot of fun, you know. I mean, I, I really enjoy it. And, and there's a group of people now that come in almost every day, and we all talk mm -hmm. about the music. No one's on camera. Everyone's just in chat, and we just talk. We just chat about the music that's playing, mm -hmm. and people people weigh in on it and say. And, and what's cool is, is like you know, someone I, I played that uh that magazine album the other day, and someone mm -hmm. mentioned a band called The Armory Show, and I found it at a record shop, and I bought it, and I was like, oh, this is great, you know. So <laughs> so it's like you know, people. People, people mention stuff and you get a lot of people that have lots of knowledge. You know, I have a yeah. certain amount of knowledge about something. Michael has a certain amount of knowledge about something. Other people have knowledge about other things, other genres, you know, that I'm not familiar with. And I, I'm all about finding, you know, like that, that Armory Show album was 
is 40 years old, but it's new to me. You know, there's a lot of 80s music like that, that I didn't listen to, you know, that, that I that I was not aware of at all. You know, because yeah, I wasn't into new wave. I wasn't into synth pop. I wasn't into any of that stuff. They have a good variety of, of it's not always one style, it really varies. As I and said. so now all this stuff is new to me, you know, so all this like new order and, and this echo in the, I, I mean, I heard of them, but I didn't listen to them, yeah. you know, yeah. so, but like this visage and magazine and the armory show and how far was your way to your record store in the eighties? Quite far. 150 miles. <laughs> 150 <laughs> okay. miles. miles. Okay. That's quite something. Okay. I would say that OGs generally sound better because A, the tapes are new and they have the right tape. They know exactly what tape they're using. And a lot of times when, when you get these reissues, you don't even know what tape they're getting. They don't know what tape they're getting, you know, and they have to do all their, and, and if they do their detective work, they usually get the right tape. But a lot of times they probably don't, you know, a lot of stuff gets mislabeled, it gets lost, you know, and how much care are they putting into? If you're, if you're That's an artist cool. that just made a record, you know, you're going to spend a lot of time on it. They'll make test pressings and, you and, you know, you're brand new, you know, and the record company wants you to sell records. So they're going to put some effort into it. A reissue, it's kind of like, eh, you know, we're, we're, you know, unless you're Chad or somebody like that that really cares. I don't think they're really, they're not emotionally invested in it at all. Whereas when you're the original, you're emotionally invested in it. The artist is emotionally invested in it. The record company's emotionally invested in it, you know, so I'd say that's why. And let me add one other point. Um, in my opinion, so what I've heard so far, there's also, in my opinion, some decisions. Very, It was very clear when it comes to those um, Roxy Music uh, remasters and the original. They, nowadays, they really, or often, not, not always, often put out the singer far more in front so that he is much more prominent than the other band members in the originals the the singing is way more coherent and inside the music and inside the band it always it almost looks uh, like this is a decision they make nowadays get the singer up front so th th that's a that, that that's an interesting analogy right there i mean um so, so sometimes I think when the when these mastering engineers tr do these reissues, I think that they try to change things. I, exactly. I, I think instead That's of I mean, yeah. it, it, instead of instead of saying picking up like a, a copy of the record that they're going to master and say, hey, I want to get back to that, maybe improve a little things here or there. I think sometimes they try to make too much of a difference, so so people so it distinguishes itself from the original. Where a lot of times people just want that original sound. But in a nice, clean record that's not been played a thousand times, it doesn't cost a thousand dollars. So uh, that's why I wonder if, if why they don't have a panel of, of people like 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 this community that we have here and say, hey, what do you guys want? You know, what do you want it to sound like? Do you want what needs to be changed? What needs to be you know left alone? You know, we are we are the core audience for these reissue labels. You know, this this is exactly the people they're they're gunning for. Yeah. So why not, you know, ask and say, hey, you know, I don't want, I, I like when things are cleaned up a bit and they may sound a little bit better, but I want the original record sound. I want, that's what I, I want. want. As, as near as possible to the original master tape. Yeah. That's what I want. Well, as near as I mean, possible. I mean, a lot of, I mean, I've heard people say you don't really want the master tape, you know, because you have to, you have to, because you have to master it for the format that you're going for. But I get what you're saying. Okay. The, yeah. the original, the, okay. the original, the original intent of the artist, yeah. you know, and that's what people, I think that's what people want, you know, at least people like me, you know, I don't have any more ambrosia for sale. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I, I think that's what, I think that's what people want is, is like, you know, it, I want my Led Zeppelin II to sound like that Robert Ludwig pressing. That's what I want. I, I don't want someone to say, I got to make it different. Make it like that. You know, Bernie it, Grunman put it very, in, that was what you just said. Bernie Grunman got into exactly this point and he said, but that's almost impossible because he had a different mastering lab than me. He yeah. has a different equipment. And to, to emulate this, well, Chad time. has the mastering lab next. at his at his place right now. So <laughs> you know from whom? You know from whom? Yeah, from Doug Sachs. Exactly. I mean, yeah. I mean, but Chad can recreate the mastering yeah. lab right now. 
So yeah. you want to cut, you want to cut dark, you want to cut the wall. I mean, uh, you can replicate the wall by the master exactly. lab right now With if you wanted to. Same mastering lab. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, I would agree with this. I mean, I mean, Led Zeppelin three. I mean, there hasn't been a good Led Zeppelin three made in, uh, since the original UK Plum. I mean, there, there literally, in my opinion, has not been a good one made since then. Why can't, why can't they? Why can't you make? I mean, Led Zeppelin's a huge band. Why can't you make a good Led Zeppelin three? Why? So, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Zip a little water. <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, it just frustrates me. I, I mean, I, I would, I would support these these reissue labels to to the hills if they could just, if they just do what I wanted. <laughs> you know, it's like, do what I want. Yeah, it's so you easy, know? isn't it? It's so easy. Yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh man, boy, that's a. I, I and the Stephen Wilson stuff to me is interesting, but it's not something that that I go to. I, I do not jump and grab my yes steven wilson box set re you know remixes i i don't but it's interesting patrick just when we said what we would love to have is in other words as as near to the original as possible and then he comes with steven wilson <laughs> because i think I mean, steven wilson steven wilson really adds his idea to the and world. he's a bass player <laughs> So, but and, but Stephen Wilson gets gets twenty four ninety six PCM wave files, and that's what he makes his remixes on. So if you're an analog person, you should not be. Yeah, know, but he does good stuff. Oh, very. He awesome. does. He does. I mean, I I have it. I mean, I I like I like it. But ZZ Top, if you want if you, if you want to get ZZ Top cheap and easy, just get that box set that that that, that Rhino did. They were mostly all cut by Chris Bellman, and they sound sound really really good. Um, you're not going to be able to get originals in great shape for for less than that because the the first album is going to cost you sixty bucks to get the first ZZ Top album on. on yeah, but records. still, but, but still, Patrick, what does sound better, the original, even if it's more expensive, or the the edition in the box set, or are they the same? I would say that there's a couple of the of the ZZ Tops in the box sets that sound better than the originals. A couple okay. of them. Now, okay. I think I think Degueo sounds a little bit better, and maybe Tejas sounds a little bit better. Okay. I don't think ZZ Top lost any sleep worrying about you, Chris Carson. I'm guarantee you, ZZ Top could not care that you didn't like their concert. Guarantee you. Have guarantee. you ever read something from Chris Carson that he likes? I haven't. No, so. Chris Carson is one of those people that likes to go somewhere and make it all about them. So you, they, they make a snarky comment so they get attention. And I, I should have just ignored it and not given him the platform. Why about you do that for wants. the second time now? <laughs> I know. I, I, I'm just a sucker. You know, I just get I just get that way. But uh, I, I've learned my lesson now, I think. We should do that. We should do that. But you know, that it's, but serious, it would be impossible. Again, we, on that stream, it became quite obvious. You have to have a name and you have to have done things nowadays. Otherwise, they would not listen to you for five And they're not going to ship us tape. I mean, except for, hey, Jimmy Page, would you mind sending Michael Michael Ludwig's The, the Master Tape to Led Zeppelin 2? Oh, we're going to make a record. Make a record. With the stupid YouTube channel? No. <laughs> Is that the guy with the with, with, with the vinyl opener? Is that that guy? I'm not sending him. I'm not sending him Led Zeppelin 2. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> Oh look! Hey, if you like him better, fine. But I guarantee you, nobody's ever heard again. of you. Nobody's What's ever heard of you. you? I know. <laughs> I know. I'm a sucker. <laughs> okay, this is the most important question so far. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I, have, I have family here, so sorry you missed out on Fifth and Friday. So I apologize. Fifth and Friday did not happen last night, and I hate to break it to you, but I will not have Fifth and Friday next week because I'll be in Dallas. So sorry. Rush or Kraftwerk? Rush. <laughs> rush what? for me. Say that again. Rachel, who is, better? Rush over who is better? Rush or Kraftwerk? For me, it's Rush. <laughs> I don't comment that. I want to do a third video with him, so I don't comment that. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, if you like, I, I like Kraftwerk I too. Know, I'm kidding, I mean, Patrick. I, know. I mean, I mean, I would. I mean, Rush is not one of those bands where I just, I just sat. You know, I, I, I mean, I mean, I would just sit and listen to them for hours and hours and hours, just like you, as, as, as a, as a teenager in, in Germany, you probably listened to Kraftwerk for hours and hours and hours and hours. You know. No. To, just, be, to no? be very honest, no, no. 
No? No. no. Not in that age, you know. I have been six so when years. you were when you were a teenager, what were you listening six to? Years old. I, I've listened to a ra radioactivity when it came out, but only through my mother and a friend of my mother. So that but it was very funny and very oh, what is that? But no, I was six years old, uh, so not that much crap. Like at that so time. So when you when you were a teenager, what was what was your what were you listening to when you wanted to get away from your parents and just didn't want to hear them talking to you? <laughs> it started like with most kids, Deep Purple, Hard Rock. Oh like really? One, you were into Deep Purple? Yeah, the one or I love I love Deep Purple. Slate. You should, you should talk I, more I, about Deep Purple. I, I, yeah, okay. But then the next step was Slate, and then really, yeah, and then there came a song. And I said, wow, wow. And that was Tube Way Army, our friends electric. Oh, Gary Newman? Uh, Gary Newman, yeah. And that was a big game changer. And and and, and from there on, there was more consistency with, with the way of music I liked as a teenager. And from there, it, it went on. So have you gotten all the OGs of Tube Way Army and Gary Newman? Have you, have you gathered those in your collection I now? Have, I have had it all. But as I told you, then my father needed space for his golf. No, but Which, now, but have you gotten them back now, or have you bought them not, back? Not all of them. Some of them. Okay. Some of them. Not all. I don't. <clears> I mean, Super Tramp. Super Tramp's one of those bands that sounds good. The U.S. and the U.K. for all of their records to me sound good that I've listened to. I mean, I, I've never heard. I would agree with that. I've watched bits and pieces of the Foo Fighters tribute. I saw the Wolfgang Van Halen and. Uh, and the singer for The Darkness do a couple of Van Halen songs. He And Wolfgang got his father down. I saw uh, Taylor Hawkins' son play drums on uh, My Hero. I thought that was pretty touching. Um, Mrs. Miller. <laughs> I don't know anything about Mrs. Miller. Someone asked about Eric Clapton. I don't, I'm don't. i not a huge Clapton fan. Um, <laughs> I know I know that um, the Mastering oh, Lab cut some of his albums, and, and I like how those sound, but I don't but I don't um, but I don't know a really whole lot about his stuff. Yeah, I put that on already. Am I that red again? Damn it! We we're talking to this for the stream. I'm like going. I, I just I I did a, like a four hour bike ride yesterday, and my face is red, and and I looked all washed out. I was like, I look like I haven't gotten outside in like days. I was like, going, shit. <laughs> and no, you don't put on this Chris Carson comment. No, let's put another one. <laughs> I'm not putting anything on that. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, Tim is another great channel. If you haven't subscribed to University of Vinyl, go. He's a great guy. He's in Colorado. He does. He, he's the he has the same passions. Um, he really makes great videos. Very in depth. Very in depth. Does his research. So definitely, big shout out to uh, to Tim University of Vinyl. Great guy. Um, John nice. Dent, Vangelis. Audio Fidelity, I don't know anything about Vangelis, but I haven't had a bad Audio Fidelity vinyl pressing yet, so they're pressed well, and they sound good. So, Oh, I saw I saw a part, I saw Chrissy Hine do Brass in Pocket. I didn't see her in Paul, Paul McCartney, though. Yeah. Oh, look, John Bandy. <laughs> Why you gotta go there, John? <laughs> because he, he, is, he thinks he's way more important than he is. Yeah. Uh, Okay, who we have? Canadian half speed masters. I have some of those and some of them sound good. I haven't done I haven't done a comparison, but um you know the US of Aphrodite Child is not bad sounding. The original US. I and I've I think I've had the I did the original German or UK, I think. Let me, let me go find out. And I and and a friend of mine did the original US and I thought it sounded really good. Yeah, I did the original UK recently. But I thought that the original US Aphrodite's Child, which is affordable, um sounded pretty good. Uh, Rick Wakeman got a reissue the, for the Rick Wakeman albums. Got a reissue. Those things can be found all over the place, you know, for cheap. So I'm surprised they reissue that stuff. That's interesting. Yeah, Black because some oh. people, you know, some people just didn't look, and so they will sell their copies. Black over colored vinyl. I don't really care, honestly. Well, my 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 recent uh, 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 experience with colored vinyl, mostly over vinyl, me please, is is very good. No problems at all in the last yeah. time. I think. No. Really, no. Yeah, Brand X is uh, Brand X is another band that could use like a nice reissue. I mean, those things those sound great. You know, had Phil Collins in it in the band, and uh, who's the main guy in it? John, what's his name? Um, 
Pierce, uh, what the hell's his name? <sighs> I can't remember his name. I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go down the freaking. In 19 minutes right now, I'd say we give it another 15. Yeah, that'll work. We are yeah. at one hour. Is that okay with you, Patrick? Yeah. Okay. Cool. UK 66. Somebody said something. What was it? They asked. What was it? Uh, before I lose it, the Colt Electric. Um. I've heard the Sire and I've heard the Beggar's Banquet, so I'd probably say the original UK or US is probably your best bet. Um, I know they did a reissue in the mid 2000s, but I don't think I liked them. Great questions, Patrick. Best Zapper. Uh, because you know, one, one I, second, to... I really do love what what uh, uh, Joel Travis and the and the uh, Zappa Trust is doing. I think their reissues remaster are fantastic, in my opinion. How is it if you look at the originals? The Chris Bellmans, I think, are phenomenal. I, I think that's one of the best reissue jobs they've done. They're they're inexpensive. They're mastered great. They're pressed great. Um, mm -hmm. That's probably one of the best reissue deals out there. You can go get some of these albums that have been hard to find mm -hmm. in good shape for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that most of those reissues sound better than the originals. I, really? I, I honestly okay. do. That's I honestly do. But I haven't dug deep into some of them because... Um, because some of the some of the Zappa stuff is just a little too out there for me, um, but I think that um, what is it the one that has uh, we're only <sighs> shit I have to go look at it but um but I mean like um uh let me see which ones I've recorded hang on mm -hmm. sure. yeah because uh, I totally agree what 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 they do with this reissues is 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 marvelous marvelous so overnight sensation is probably my favorite frank zappa album pardon excuse me overnight sensation is probably my favorite zappa album mm -hmm. that one mm -hmm. sounds for john goodsall thank you Zeb. um one size fits all i think the reissue beats the beats the original um mm -hmm. hot rats the one bernie grunman cut sounds phenomenal chunga's revenge sounds great apostrophe sounds great um i don't i didn't get 200 motels because i don't like that record so what I is this Joe's Garage? No, no, it's Uncle Meat. Uncle Meat's the one that I don't like. Uh, Uncle Meat, I don't have. I've not listened to the Joe's Garage. I did buy it, but uh, I haven't listened to it yet. They do sound excellent, but sometimes it's hard to find those records, Zeb, depending on where you live. So it's not necessarily that, that you need it because they, 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 they don't sound good. It says you need it because you can't find it. So that's the problem is that you can't find it. So somebody asked me uh, quite some time ago, they said, have you ever found, heard a bootleg that sounded good? Um, I have heard of some bootlegs that sound good. Um, I can name you one, the first bootleg in, uh, in, the, in the series from, from uh, Neil Young, the first one was incredible good, the boot, bootleg. It was unbelievable. Yeah, you know, so there are some, there are, and so there's, uh, it depends on, on, some stuff is considered a bootleg, so, Here's a here's a nice an example. Let me go grab this. Um, where is it? No, no. What we meant both meant was the electric recording company. Yeah. You know, the company who only puts out three hundred copies for a relatively high price. That was the copy we talked about for the forever changes. So this is a Jerusalem reissue, and I'm pretty sure that. It was probably not licensed or a lot of these reissues like this are rare albums that aren't licensed, mm -hmm. that, that weren't licensed, like Four Men with Beards, A Karma. A, a Karma is a bootleg and some people, you know, some of those sound pretty decent. Not great, but sound decent. But this one does not sound good, by the way. So just so you know, this one does not sound good. Ah, I've heard to, uh, another bootlegs I, I think was great. There are a lot of, and there even has been a label. I don't, I've, of course, I forgot the name. Uh, live Rolling Stones concerts, uh, uh, which are quite good. And those are also bootlegs, really good stuff. It's not a bootleg, just a recording from the audience. So I like the Rhino reissues of the Talking Heads. I think those were all done by, uh, by Kevin Gray or, or Chris Bellman, I think, did, did those. And those sound phenomenal. I think I have all of them. But those were done by Kevin Gray. Um, like and fear again, of music. Compared, again, Patrick, compared to the originals, I think just as good or a little bit better. Okay. Yeah, the Jerusalem is a good album, but the the vinyl is so noisy and bad; it just doesn't sound good at all. No, Four Men with Beards are, are definitely a bootleg label. 
they definitely have them. I think Lilith and A Karma uh, definitely are, are considered bootleg labels. Alice Cooper, I like. I have the Rhino reissues. I haven't really done any serious listening to them, but I think they were pressed well, and the ones that I have sound good. Um, you know, Rhino in generally does 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 good stuff when they when they when they take when they take the care that they need and get the right sources. I think they do good stuff. <laughs> you know who you know who would do great here would be um, John Bitbot Boom. That guy is super super knowledgeable and very down to earth nice guy and oh, knows. Well, what we can do i think maybe we talk we but i have an idea we can add him for 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 certain aspects of this if you like. yeah he is great he is absolutely he's absolutely phenomenal in what what he knows and he's and he's he remembers everything he has he has a memory like <laughs> I, nobody's I already, business patrick i already hate him so don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so yeah, John. If you don't if you don't know who John Bitbop Boom is, I would definitely suggest go go looking him up as well. You know, there's so many people that that are that are great resources. You know, that I found here. You know, that I've, I've I've learned so much about that stuff from from lots of people from all over the place. I learned something from just about everybody. I learned something just reading comments. You know, so absolutely. And that's really the whole point. You know, is is to is to find you know. Find out music that you weren't aware of, you know, like all these reissues that I've gotten, like this, all these Gearson reissues and like the Wicked Lady stuff like that. I never would have would have thought about getting those. You know, I thought those were just, you know, you know, a crappy label that put out shit records, you know, and, and you know, between Randy and, you know, Dead Wax and, you know, people like that recommending them. You know, I'm like, going, yeah, you know, these sound great. So. And that's why I do the do the listening hangs during the week, you know, so I can play those and other people can find it, you know, and then you talk about it and find out other stuff. So that's that's kind of that's kind of like the the, the fun thing for me is like learning and just, you know, Harry's not Harry just sent me a box of stuff uh, this week, you know, of you know, like like bubblegum pop and and stuff we that talk, I never would have listened to. We talk a lot of other channels. Zep also has a channel and he yes. really is into crowd rock and and puts out a lot of live concert bootlegs but fantastic stuff so if you're into this kind of music he is also a channel and he knows really he knows a lot about Prague. he knows yeah. a lot about lots of stuff so zeb zeb's another great there, like i said there's so many people that have such a great resource that a lot of people don't don't even say anything you know they just kind of like are you talking about are you talking about the zombies is that what you're talking about, Mike? If so, I've I, I have that. I have had it. No. <laughs> is this the I haven't heard the reissue. Um I have the I think I think the German or is that mother's milk? I can't remember. It's hard to remember some of this stuff. <laughs> okay, Patrick. Second round. Do you want to give your opinion on Japanese pressings, Michael, before we leave? They have really great jackets. <laughs> and they have great quiet vinyl. Exactly All right, Jurassic Plastic. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin Gray, I, I have the Jurassic Plastic of The Damned, and that one, I did the Damned self-titled album, that one doesn't sound good to me. I don't think it's his fault. I think it's the source, but it sounds nothing like the original UK, nothing like it. And I usually like Kevin Gray stuff. So. All right, we need to cut this off at some point. So <laughs> Exactly. You know what? I think... We do it again in 14 days if you are free. Okay. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. I, I love this. Time flies. It does. It does. It does. Okay. Thank you once more, Patrick. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, thanks everyone out here. You guys are actually yeah, the, the, only reason why, the only reason why we're here. <laughs> that's that's so true. Thank you for your time. Thank yeah. for watching. We'll keep up the stream. See have you next time, Michael. Everyone have a good weekend and uh, support each other. Exactly. <laughs>